Okay, a lot of people just like to dismiss this movie as another Hollywood attempt at a scary type thriller horror. But it's not. It's it's written by Aaron Kruger, man. The guy who wrote Scream 3, The Ring, Reindeer Games, and also The Ring 2, 2005. Also, he did rewrites for Scream 4. That's how much respect the Weinsteins have, have for this guy. And I love this movie from the first time I saw it. I've seen it like four or five times since 05 when it came out. Let's just get straight to the cast. Kate Hudson, she's so hot. Everyone already knows that. Peter Sarsgaard, you might not believe this, but this guy's always been one of my favorite actors ever since this movie and in Flight Plan. I always th thought he deserved more than more of a better role, and he should never be a villain in a shitty ass movie like Flight Plan ever again. Actually, that movie was alright. It's just Jodie Foster's annoying. I've, I've actually seen that movie four or five times also since then. I just love the guy's demeanor and every character he plays. And and when he got cast as the Green Lantern villain, Dr. Hector Hammond, I was so excited. I thought it was going to be the best comic book movie in a huge franchise. And... Everyone knows how it bombed. Pretty much it was in a clustered 2011 comic book season. There was Captain America coming out. X-Men. And then... No, but that script was whack to begin with. I thought it was going to be epic. But it was only like 100 or an hour and 50 minutes long. But anyway, back onto this movie. It also stars Gina Rollins. Fresh off her role. From uh, The Notebook 2004, where she plays a huge role in that. This bitch was a pinup basically in the mid 50s, 50 years before this movie even came out. She's a legend. Um, believe it or not, Kate Hudson was only like 24, 25 when she did this. She's always looked a little older than she was. I think she was only like 23 when they filmed How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days in 03. But uh, I haven't really talked about what this is about. Basically, it's a voodoo horror. And it's not like thick, hardcore voodoo. Um, like the serpent and the rainbow is, where it entrenches you into that culture that Wes Craven does, where he goes straight to Haiti for that movie. This is set in the bayou of Louisiana. Amazing setting. You just get the deep south feel with the moss on the trees. You just want to watch this for the scenery alone. And they film it at an amazing house, an amazing plantation. The end of the movie is just fucking amazing. First time you see it, you don't see it coming. But if you've seen a lot of horror movies or a lot of movies, you might see it coming. Even if you do see it coming, it's fucking awesome when they do the transformation. <laughs> Um, basically I'm going to talk spoilers for anyone who's seen it now. I'm going to give the movie a B. Um, and so yeah, at the end of the movie, they transfer the souls. You don't believe... They've been running in that house. The, they were slaves back in like the late 1800s or something. And they've been switching out bodies through voodoo. Chucky style, child's play style. Into different fresh bodies. And they end up luring in Kate Hudson. Because the last time they switched was like in the early 60s. And so Peter Sarsgaard, his character, already switched over. Oh, it's just great script. Aaron Kruger's a legend. Um, I fucking love this movie. And then she transfers over Caroline into Caroline's body. And then she picks up the cigarette, so you know that it's Gina Rowland's character. Starts smoking it, and the bad guys win. But dude, I love the movie when the bad guys win. Who doesn't? This is JBM from Villain News. The Skeleton Key, 2005. My horror movie marathon videos. I'm having done. I'm having fun doing these videos. Um, I'm pretty much done with this discussion now. Leave your comment. Send me a personal message if you want to, if you want me to do any videos, and tell me your opinion. I like to talk horror movies. I'm out.